Welcome everybody and huge thanks for joining us today. I'm Kate Moan, I'm Director of Member Engagement at the Northern Housing Consortium. And we've brought this webinar together with MediaWorks, um, who are a digital marketing agency and also NHC supporter members. So I'll let Brett give you a bit of a more full introduction to MediaWorks, but supporter members really allow us to broaden the range of topics that we can bring to the membership because we are quite a small, a small team at the NHC. Um, so today we've got Brett Jacobson, who is founder and chief executive of MediaWorks, um, Andrew Blankensop, their creative director, and also Daniel Hoggin, who is chief technology officer. And from Home Group, we've got Nasheen Hussein as well, who is executive director of business development. So I think it, digital services have been really high on the agenda for quite some time now. And I think in the current climate, that's even more the case. Social distancing looks like it's going to be with us for for the longer term and really today we wanted to try and explore how we can best use technology to better understand our customers particularly the vulnerable ones but also how we can free up capacity by putting this sort of business as usual demand and um, through digital channels and allow our staff to spend their time on the people that need it most we know that there's going to be a recession and we want to support our customers through that but also protect our organizations from that as best we can and i think that uh digital services will be part of the route to doing that. So I know we've all had a lot of challenges thrown at us over the last few weeks, but I think there really is an opportunity here. We've picked up from members that some of their customers who previously didn't engage digitally are now prepared to, although by no means all of them, but some are. And members have also told us that they feel that their, um, their relationship with tenants has strengthened over the last few weeks because I think they've been able to step in and provide support when sometimes other agencies haven't been able to. So I think a real opportunity here to start to rethink that relationship with our customers and really build on what we've been able to start over the last eight weeks. And I think digital is, is key to that. So I'll hand over now to Brett to do a bit more of an introduction into MediaWorks, but thanks very much again in there. I hope you enjoy it. Awesome, cheers, Kate. Thank you. Um, so yeah, my name is Brett Jacobson. I'm founder and, and CEO of MediaWorks. Um, MediaWorks are, we're 120 full-time heads across uh, four locations in the UK and, and we're headquartered in the Northeast. Um, as Kate mentioned, we're a, we're a digital transformation agency and we specialize in helping organizations such as yourselves embrace new digital channels, digital platforms and, and, and new strategies to engage your audience and tenants and customers in, 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 in a much more efficient way. Um, ultimately, you know, our aims is to help you save costs, improve efficiency and, and create kind of first class digital experiences, both internally and externally. Um, I think, you know, today what, what Andy's going to gonna cover in his presentation, I think for the, for the next sort of 20 minutes or so, and then we'll kind of go into a Q and A's is looking at how you guys specifically, um, can, can deliver, uh, much far improved digital experiences, um, thinking about how you understand your audience how you um, deliver kind of engaging and seamless kind of multi-channel experiences online and offline. Um, all the thinking about accessibility and inclusion and how digital can support this and enhance what you're currently offering. Um, and then ultimately just driving customer excellence through digital. Um, and then we've got a, a, a Q and A for about 20 minutes or so where we'll hopefully get Nasheen involved from, from home group's perspective. And we can also support that with some of our other experiences from other housing associations we've supported, but but also other sectors that are possibly a little bit further up this curve, and we can bring some of that learnings to, to this industry. Um, so yeah, Andy, I think if I hand over to you and you kind of take us through the next sort of twenty minutes or so and, and take the screen. Yeah, I'm going to just try and share now, guys. If you give me two seconds, so start by. And so, um, hi everybody. So, as Brett said, uh, I'm Andy. I'm the creative director here at MediaWorks, and I'm just going to spend 20 minutes, probably, just running through kind of how we see digital playing a huge part in kind of tackling some of the challenges that we've already just um, discussed there. And I suppose just to to fuel some thinking, really, and then we'll, we'll cover off uh, with a Q and A. And I think hopefully this will maybe fuel some of the answers that we bring up and and, and discuss further on. So. Supporting customer excellence through digital transformation. So I think it's fair to say is that we are a digital revolution uh, is kind of currently taking 
KSM plays at an unprecedented speed. And I think the way that um, customers are engaging with businesses and organisations and also just in their day-to-day -day life uh, through digital is kind of picking up in pace. It was already happening and current climate has forced that to, to almost go up a notch and, and, and transform even quicker than we expected. Um, I think digital, obviously we know the private sector is investing heavily in digital channels. We know that we spend more and more time in retail spaces, buying online and shopping, and we do more and more on social channels on our day to day. And the private sector is really embracing that um, within, and investing in these areas. But I think what's kind of key is that we have areas like the health services and the NHS and also the government who are almost, their digital first initiatives are, are fueling the digital norm. And I think uh, our tenants and, and customers outside of, of, kind of our housing associations are experiencing digital every single day and it's almost helping it's, it's shaping their expectations from us as organizations and um, which gives us a, a great opportunity i think to, to embrace this and look at how digital can help us and our businesses and um, better serve customers um, and ensure that we're giving them what they want and what they need um, and due to COVID 19 it's fair to say digital adoption is at an all-time high um, and it's played a huge part in business continuity in one aspect. It's played a huge part in business success in other areas. And it's also making its way in households like never before. Uh, and, and I think that three examples here to look at is local independents who, who might not have necessarily seen digital as a channel that they should embrace or use in their day to day are doing so because they have to to exist. Uh, an example there is local markets where we would rely on people going out to the market to get fresh food, produce, meat, veg. And actually, we've now seen uh, online delivery uh, on delivery taking place online to allow these people to keep trading through a, a very uh, difficult time. Um, Zoom, uh, you know, this is an, another webinar. We've probably done hundreds of them now. But I think what's really interesting is prior to the current kind of situation. Zoom was probably something that we'd all just heard in business world and we'd used it to do conference calls and, and communicate around the country and globe. However, Zoom's made its way into the, the front rooms of households across across the world. I think you know 50% increase in participants, which they're now calling them in meetings every day, is phenomenal. So we've got people utilizing technology like this uh, in their social um, and, and kind of social capacity to speak to families, to, to talk in the business world and at home, which is, is, is a, a big observation that we'll kind of pick up on as we go through. And then finally, I think, which I, think I experienced in the days, companies are almost being forced to drive digital just based on the demand for their services during this, this crisis. If you speak to people like AE, the first thing you're told is, unfortunately, we will not be taking calls from certain people and you have to go to online channels to to facilitate the query that you have to pay bills or whatever. And that's they can prioritize customers, more vulnerable customers, and give them the service that they need. So when we spend um, time with organizations talking about digital transformation and, and this kind of adoption of it, we would almost sometimes discount certain segments and think, you know, they aren't going to engage with us online and we're going to have to continue to, to engage with them through ch the, the ch their channel choice. Whereas now, you know, because of the current climate, we're forcing certain segments online, unfortunately, and, and, they're, and they're almost being forced to, to engage with organizations in this way, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. Uh, we work with uh, Global Web Index, who are a, a third party, and they do lots of kind of surveys that go out and, and kind of ask questions of, of consumers. And they've done this during COVID-19, where they've done three waves. And the, and the third wave of research that they've done, what, what they kind of found from, I think it was about, about over a thousand respondents, was that off the back of this, they all intend to continue to use digital to engage with brands and services in the future. So we, we may have been forced online, but it's a behavior that's going to stick with us because people are starting to, certain brands have got really brilliant digital channels in place. And, and it's actually just that nudge to, to, to pick up a digital channel which mightn't have been a number one priority, but because they've been forced, they're going to hang around. They've enjoyed that experience and it's something they'll continue to do. So I think that's a really a key observation. Um, and I think the the big observation from that, that we, we kind of taken from this is that due to social distancing measures and the new challenges that are kind of being put upon us, digital can play a huge part in how housing organizations and businesses respond, adapt, and then continue to deliver we put customer excellence there, but even just exist, I suppose. But, you know, we can actually take those digital engagements and, 
and develop them and enhance them and take people on that journey to, to give much better customer satisfaction through digital channels. So there's a huge opportunity to continue this momentum that digital now has. And you know, as um, Kate said, it's, it's almost become, it was already hot on the agenda. And I think it's probably just a little bit more hot on the agenda as it comes to moving forward. So what the, we've been looking at different studies. And on the left-hand side, it was a study done by PwC and they asked uh, respondents uh, how they felt around brands engaging uh, through digital channels. And 59% of customers felt that companies had lost touch with the human element of customer experience. This idea of going digital, uh, creating new experiences, but forgetting the hu that the human element is, is, is key to that. And it's sometimes often a reason why somebody would choose to to liaise or, or choose a particular brand or service because of that human element. The way that they've they've engaged in the past is a big defining factor. Um, and then on the other side of things, we've got a Harvard Business Review that I think was carried out in late 2019, which is only 14% of businesses kind of say that customer centricity is central and integral to their overall business strategy, which kind of one would lead quite nicely into the other than the fact that yes, we are going digital. We are understanding that there's business efficiencies in automation and implement digital. However, we can't lose sight of the fact that customers need to be at the heart of everything that we do and any uh, automation or any self-serve channels we, we decide to implement should always put customers at the forefront because their satisfaction uh, is what should really drive this. It should be for what customers want, not really what businesses want. Um, and if we get that right, then everything should kind of fall in place after that. So when we look at customer centricity, uh, centricity being key um, and integral to digital transformation, uh, I think it, what we want to try and come across uh, or explain today is that digital can play a key part in all aspects of customer centricity. Uh, and initially that will start with understanding your customer and their needs. So, you know, traditionally we know we spend time going out, doing focus groups, spending time um, asking questions of our, of our audience, but how can digital play a part in helping us better understand our customers is, is a great place to, to start, I think, um, on the next 15 minutes of your time. So digital tools can definitely help us understand what questions customers have and what they're looking to do. So, for example, Google is, uh, we, we would argue that Google is probably the biggest and largest unbiased data set in the world. People ask questions of Google that you, I mean, you wouldn't ask your doctor, you wouldn't ask your partner, you know, people put everything into Google. So it's a great way to understand what people really want. Um, and what that can then do is start shaping short term and long term strategies. So for example, then we've got what makes you eligible for housing, the key question that we know people are asking every single day online. And then what we can then start doing is looking at ways we can um, implement in the short term solutions around that. So it, you know, I think a lot of people we here will know we spent uh, the past 12 months working very closely with Nishin and the guys at Home Group and um, looking at their digital channels and how can we better serve our customers through digital. This is a, an example of where we've identified um, content gaps or ways that we can enhance and improve our content to better support them with just kind of basic ways around text and content. But then when I talk about our long-term strategies, how can we then expand on that and maybe start actually providing self-serve channels around allowing people to, to understand or I suppose check their own eligibility before they start contacting us or we can point them in the right direction. So I think things like uh, exploring customer demand and understanding what people expect of us online are a great way to, to start shaping a strategy moving forward. Another area where we, um, we, we've spent time is looking at social listening. So in, I, I, throughout this, I'll reference kind of current climate, but you know, social um, engagement is an all-time high. We know that um, everybody in the world right now, and, and tenants in particular, will be spending more time online than ever before. Uh, and there's a lot of conversations that happen about new, your brand, your, uh, your association, that we aren't aware of. And I think going into the social channels to understand what's being said about a particular service is a great way to start harnessing information and insight that we can then action. Um, so a, an example here is when we looked at all of the tweets that mentioned um, whole group, we could start seeing trends around um, kind of pest infestation. 
what we could then start doing is start like, the same kind of process of looking at Google, but using social channels where we were able to be way more reactive and respond quite quickly. So th this example is pest infestation, but if we were to go to social channels now, the kind of questions tenants are asking are going to be very different because the circumstance we find ourselves in now is very different to what it was four or five months ago. And the concerns of our tenants will have shifted very quickly. And I think the, the, the social channels are a finger on the pulse, real time way to, to gain insight. And finally, I touched on GWI before. So again, we, we're talking here about understanding our tenants from a, a tenant's perspective and, and what do they what what do we want to provide them or what do they want from us as a, as a housing association? But if we want to be truly customer centric and understand them as, as individuals, we can go to third party tools like GWI to understand who they really are and what they really do online. So we looked at a particular segment um, using GWI and looked at male and female age 18 to 25, the low income in the UK. And what we can start understanding here is what are their online behaviours beyond uh, their, their housing situation. So we can see that they over-index, which is a way of saying they spend a lot of time doing a particular thing online. They over-index on finding information, which is, is quite vague. But I think when we come down to the third one, we can see that the research on how to do things, you know, things like YouTube and providing self-serve content and how-to guides are a great way to empower people. Uh, and we can see that within this particular demographic, who are our customers of the future and will be for the next, you know, 20, 30 years, there's an opportunity here to, to capitalize on this, I think, and start providing, first of all, content and videos and create a long-term strategy to empower our tenants and, and make sure that our digital channels are set up to do that. So those are kind of, I'm um, pretty sure I'll go on to the next slide next, those are three areas where I, I think that we can use digital to gain a, a deeper understanding um, of, our, of our audience and our customers and our tenants to start shaping a, a digital strategy. So digital isn't just about creating the experiences online. Uh, it's about using digital to understand people and understand how they want to engage with us and then rolling that into what is the next part of, of, the, of the deck. So designing experiences that drive and promote our digital services is essential to adoption. Um, and what we mean by this is, uh, you know, it's all... It's, it's a fantastic idea to create more digital experiences because we know that there's a demand out there. But what we have to really ensure is that digital is at the core of everything that we do and that when we open up these channels, we have a strategy and a plan around um, adoption of these channels and how we promote them and make sure that they are promoted as a as our first priority if it, if it is essential. And I know that when we, we talk later, we'll talk about channel choice. This is probably the, the, the first nod towards that. Um, Designing with data allows us to guide customers towards self-serve methods. So um, if we were to create a particular journey uh, and, and digitize it and put it online, we need to understand where in the, in the customer journey, which is wider and, and beyond that website, that we expect people to engage and what are our touch points with that customer and at what point do we start promoting our new channels, promoting our new services. So for example, using Google Analytics, you, you, no doubt you guys have had reports put on your desks where we're seeing lots of data and, and data is fantastic, but it's about knowing how to then um, apply some insight to that data and drive an action that's going to add some value. So for example, on the Home Group project, we know that um, Home Group have had that mobile moment. Uh, and the majority of their traffic comes via a mobile device. So at that point, we need to prioritize our focus and ensure that as we open up these digital channels, are they at the forefront of our mobile experience? Have we, and as simple as it sounds, if we are trying to promote one-off payments through a digital channel to free up time of our, you know, our, our agents in the call center, is that journey and that, that um, channel at the forefront of that experience? Or on mobile, have we, not subconsciously, have, have we almost demoted that to a scroll, which is going to take the user at the bottom of a page, which we know only 30% of our audience get to. So the data points that we can gather and collate on, on behavior on site will help us drive that adoption of these digital channels and we can make sure that at the forefront of experiences where we know uh, tenants are being uh, our website and via mobile channels. Um, prioritizing high volume journeys with an intuitive experience will help take strain, will remove hair strain on support staff. So 
a lot of what we do when we're going into to businesses is understand where to start first, you know, because uh, take the government, the government initiative was to take 100,000 transactions and digitize them. And you've got to start somewhere. Uh, and I think, you know, high volume calls and, and, and those areas are where we should definitely prioritize and, and focus on. But I think it's when we create these experiences online, we have to ensure that they're intuitive and easy to use. So uh, reporting repair um, or requesting maintenance is, is definitely an area where we will all feel uh, high volume calls coming through. Uh, and I think it's an area that there's an opportunity, I think, to almost um, educate users, if implemented correctly, to, to re reduce contacts. Um, because it might be that we have a high number of calls or high volume calls coming through a call center around an issue that isn't something that we can solve. And if a user isn't uh, told this information or isn't presented that, then we, we haven't potentially avoided a contact. So I think ex journeys like re re reporting maintenance and report repair are a great place to start, to start um, shifting people to the right place using digital. Um, and one thing that we'd always say here is uh, it's not all about digital. Um, and I, it's twice I've said this in terms of channel choice, but some journeys require a phone call. Some journeys you know, require being there on the end of a phone for a vulnerable customer or a particular scenario that presenting somebody with a form or digital route is just not the right thing to do if we were to put our customers first. And I think by creating experiences that allow us to direct and channel audiences and journeys correctly, we can do what's right for the customer. And, and this is not about a blanket approach of digital to everybody. And I think that's kind of critical to making our digital channels work correctly. Um, and when we talk about better serving customers and, and freeing up time, I, this, what this allows us to do is to, to, uh, to give people the time and tenants the time that they, they need around particular journeys and offer channel choice. So, for example, when I spoke there about one journey ending in a telephone conversation, that's what's needed. When we look at live chat, it's a great way to, uh, live chat's a great way to deal with certain queries. Um, not every query. Some things are dealt with better via a telephone. And then this idea of a Zoom call, and you can tell Zooms when now the question mark is a bit of a late addition, but there's been, as we said, there's a huge increase in the number of people that feel more and more comfortable using technologies like Zoom, which allow you to, for example, sing into a tenant's house without having to visit. And it allows you to maybe provide self-serve content that is beyond text, that is beyond video, but that might need a little bit extra help and support. And I think these, these things and these new technologies that are emerging off the back of where we're at now are things that we should definitely consider on how we, how we kind of move forward. You know, if we know that there's a certain challenge around maintenance and repairs, that an engineer going out is a little bit overkill, but the expectation for somebody to self-serve is also a little bit, like, unrealistic. Then can Zoom be a middle ground that allow us to start engaging with tenants in this new way that, we know that people are becoming more and more familiar and comfortable with. And I think the good thing about Zoom, what that will then also allow is that human element that people are feeling that are, are missing from digital channels. So that went in with a question mark, because it's a last late edition, as you can imagine. <laughs> Ensuring your services are accessible and inclusive is essential. So we talk about vulnerable um, customers and, and that will come in more to play, I think, in the second half of the conversation. But being inclusive and accessible is key. Um, and I think as we open up these channels, we need to be aware of all of the different scenarios and abilities within our audiences and our tenants to, to engage with us digitally, how comfortable they are. We've got a, a younger demographic who we would call like digital natives, who grew up on digital. However, as we get a little bit, as digital becomes a little bit, um, I suppose, alien to people, we need to, do we need to uh, open it up and be inclusive and make sure that we are assisting people through these kind of technologies. So I'm going to talk through a couple, of, a couple of ways to do that. And tools like Recite Me are a fantastic way to expand digital to a broader audience. Um, and the reason why we like this one is because it's such a cost-effective way to do it. Um, Recite Me is a fantastic tool that allows you to give screen readers to read out text. It gives language translators, which we know that, you know, as, our, as our, we have quite a diverse uh, tenant uh, population, the language translators are a great way to open up and expand content that is accessible to these people. We have magnifiers that allow content to be more accessible on screen, dictionaries to help people understand, and then screen masks and the complexity of these things and, the, and what they're able to do for such low level input is actually fantastic. So I think 
digital channels can also make services more accessible than a telephone conversation actually would. And then we can even look beyond that to more innovative solutions, which we've we've always been quite excited by this one of the models. So, you know, things like an Alexa skill, you know, Alexa skill can provide a unique experience to those who might struggle with a particular technology. So somebody that isn't comfortable on a mobile phone or, or a, a laptop or a computer device could use something like Alexa. And Alexa is becoming more and more accessible for people like ourselves to, to, to build and create skills with existing content. And we create all of this content for an online journey which might be consumed via a mobile phone or laptop. We can very easily repurpose that content and create an Alexa skill that can be access, accessed through voice commands, which then means self-serve channels and reporting can be done without the use of a screen or, or being able to use these things. And then the most exciting thing, I think, off the back of that is then when we can start looking at nudge, nudge theory and alerts for vulnerable customers. So if we can start putting these Alexa skills into the heart of, of, of homes, we can start using these to, to give nudges, to, to, to provide additional support um, to particular customer segments that would benefit from that. I think this is something that we've always been quite excited about. And I think it isn't being utilised to the best of its ability just yet. Um, Segmenting and tailoring experiences. So when we talk about uh, understanding customers to shape digital experiences, we talk about putting digital experiences into our tenants' homes and opening them up to create more engagement. What that's going to then do is going to create more digital touch points and it's going to allow us to learn more about our tenants. Um, and then what we can start doing is segmenting that data to start providing more tailored and personalized experiences, which again is going to, in my opinion, respond to this idea that people are using losing the human element through digital. So how can we use digital data, touch point, to inform and create more personalized experiences? And I'm going to walk through a couple of examples which are outside of the sector, but what we believe are, yeah, I'm going to say world-class solutions, or, or I would say kind of excellent implementations of, of digital and how it can be used to provide uh, a, a customer experience and also business objectives in the same sense. So Yorkshire Water, are, are, uh, they are a client of ours and we have worked with them uh, on this project. So Yorkshire Water put in a new a new platform that allowed them to drive objectives, like in company objectives, and also uh, self-serve channels through personalised experiences. So what we were able to do uh, for Customers, a lot of people that visit the Yorkshire Water website, we don't know who they are, they're anonymous. However, we can use digital technology to still um, tailor experiences. So, for example, anybody that visits the Yorkshire Water website will click on that pay your bill button. And at that point, we know that that person is uh, not signed up to direct debit and they definitely don't have a meter. So we can start to learn and understand certain behaviours from the way that people are, are engaging with and using our digital channels. And off the back of that, what we can then do is when customers continue to use digital channels is start to promote messages that we feel like would add value to a customer. So there, were, there, there was a, a business objective to move as many people onto meters as we possibly can. But there's no point in communicating a message to a customer of uh, sign up for a meter who's already on a meter. You can't be broadcasting generic messages to people. Otherwise, we will lose that human element. So through personalization, we're, we're able to drive behavior that will add value to a customer, but also some of our key business objectives alongside that as well. And that is some, in my opinion, some very basic personalization that can have a, a fantastic impact on business objectives and customer satisfaction. But then moving beyond that and to look at how can we use big data to really to, to really transform the services and, and, and deliver business objectives. So Target is a retailer um, who were particularly interested in acquiring new mums as a customer because they knew that over time a new mum had a fantastic lifetime value uh, and they'd be a customer for life, essentially. So what they did is they looked uh, they, they worked back from sales data around a new mum who would then go on buy nappies, uh, baby wipes, or any kind of baby products to understand what was their previous behavior before that engagement. So uh, what they identify is that they tend to purchase a lot of wash clothes, supplements. They create an account at some point. There was cotton balls and a large amount of unscented lotion, believe it or not. But what they were able to do is by overlaying, creating a huge data set was to identify that trend 
And at that point, you can look, you can listen for signals which will, um, which will trigger early intervention. In this instance, it was how could we start marketing specific products to a customer at the right time. So we need to personalize the experience on site to nudge customers early. So at that point, when you start visiting the website, you can see that at touch point one and two, we can then start driving free gift cards around some of the products that we need. And I think what is also kind of, I suppose, critical and essential to this is this idea of continuous improvement and iterative development. As we look at short-term and long-term strategies, um, the idea of testing and learning is, is absolutely critical to adapt, evolve, and, and excel. Um, because as we create more digital touch points, we collect more information around our, our tenants potentially, we can then start shaping a much better and more improved service. So that goes back to understanding how our customers are now engaged with us, tweaking experience, learning from it, segmenting data to then drive improvement and continued uh, customer centricity basically and putting them at the heart of what we do, continuously learning and evolving. And I think in summary is because what we're, what we're trying to allude to here is that being digital as an organization is more than just providing services online. Um, it's not just about opening up a form, building an app or creating a website. It's about the way that we behave. It's a way that we can use data to inform everything that we do, to shape a strategy that we do, to, to create an experience that will deliver that strategy. But also, how can we then use digital to, to report on and create insight for, for improvements on a day-to-day -day basis or every week, how can we continue to improve digital services to give a better experience overall? And that is me. So oh. I will say thank you um, and I'll hand back to, the, to Brett who I think is going to take us through uh, a few Q&As with the rest of the panel. Fantastic. Thanks, Andy. I thought, I thought that was really useful, really valuable, lots of super important insights there. Um, and I think probably helps, helps shape, shape these sort of next sort of few questions and whatnot that we've got here. Um, it's just a quick point to mention for any attendees or participants, if you do want to ask a question to any panelists, just pop it in the Q&A section at the bottom um, and we can answer those live kind of as we go. Um, yeah, I suppose first thing really, Dan, this probably maybe comes to you, yourself. Um, a lot of the people that are on the, the, the webinar today are probably thinking, okay, that sounds great. Where can I start? What kind of tools can I get access to in data sets that could help me inform what a digital strategy might look like for them uh, moving forward? So and where can we direct people to, Dan, to start gathering this kind of data and insight to, to, to as a start point? Yeah, I think obviously Andy touched on a, a few sources, but it, probably if you're going to break them down, I think, you know, firstly, it's understanding your customer. So how do you get third party research so research data, things like Global Web Index, YouGov, focus groups? You know, how can you actually get a panel that you can use to drive real insight at scale and understand what, what tenants and customers want? And, you know, that gives you things like, you know, interests, behaviors, their attitudes, and you can really understand them, get a good picture. But I think, again, the other piece is how do you look at another bucket and kind of, you know, put that in, in context of, of your people that you've already got and data you're collecting. So your first party data, things like Google Analytics, so you can understand, you know, from that you still get things like demographics, age, gender, location, the types of device they're coming on, but also things about, you know, what is important to them because you can understand what content they're navigating towards, which content is the most popular. Um, but also look at things like, you know, um, you know, how they arrived at the site, you know, what kinds of channels are, are driving people, what acquisition channels, is it through social, um, you know, actually how are people finding the site and finding that content. And then the other thing is, for, for Malatex for me, is things like when, you know, time of day, day of week, actually, when are people having these issues that are needing to, to kind of navigate to the site and, and, and get that. And, you know, Andy touched on some of the work we've done with the auction water, you know, we've done some stuff in the automotive space as well. And, you know, there's this notion that you might want to use digital to, to push people to other channels. It's, it's all about this thing that actually what happens if someone's got a problem at 12 o'clock at night or, you know, based on, you know, their, their shift patterns, maybe they work during the day and in the nighttime they've got issues. So how can we understand what type of customers are looking for at certain times of the day and how do we make sure that we've got a resolution or a solution to, to solve their problem? And then I think, you know, there's other data types that are freely available, free things like social, Andy touched on, you know, pulling data in from Twitter, what are people talking about, whether it's a topic or your brand itself. 
And then other free tools, you know, there's trending data. There's lots of it and lots of different teams within the organizational that have access to the data. But it's how do you pull all this together and, and really drive, I suppose, insight to inform. Um, so part of that is, is a reporting framework. How do you understand how you bring all this data together, understand which bit's important and use that to, to drive kind of decision making? Yeah, I think Andy flagged a, a tool in his, his presentation there around, uh, which is called alsoasked.com. And it's a, that's a huge, hugely valuable way. You just put in any topic and it scrapes Google to kind of bring back the top 50 queries that, that anybody's typing in and searching for and questions they're asking around that topic. So things like social housing and the, the example Andy give, this can start to fuel content plans for your teams to be answering the right questions that your audience are asking and not just kind of producing content for content's sake. But yeah, that, some really useful stuff there, Dan. Um, I think, I suppose the next question that probably a lot of people on the call are, are thinking about as well is, okay, you know, great, we've accessed the data, we're, we're kind of committed to this. What are the steps that they can be taking internally to, to embed this kind of digital first approach in their organization? And I know, Nasheen, you guys have, have had a lot of experience of that at home group and how, where, where can people get started with that and what was your approach? Yeah, I suppose the the first step is to um, map your online end-to-end -end customer journey um, offline and what that actually looks like. Have a look at um, what percentage are actually digital versus who aren't. If you already have a digital platform, that is, um, identify which bits of your online customer journey can be digitalized um, and, and what methods you can use to signpost um, uh, of certain groups. So for example, um, your contact center, could you amend the script accordingly to signpost people to um, uh, visit your website or sign up for an online account? Use um, focus groups, um, key stakeholders, be it um, internal teams that are uh, customer facing and also um, customers themselves to really um, get the key detail that is required as part of those um, building those digital journeys. And I think um, uh, having worked in a number of industry sectors, what um, organizations often make the mistake of is um, uh, you know, forgetting to seamlessly integrate your uh, offline and online platforms, which is actually fundamental because digital is not a replacement for other channels. It actually um, complements um, other channels and customers should be given the flexibility to help maximize a the customer experience um, but also to deliver on um, your customer promise and that is key so um, maximize those opportunities um, to allow uh, customers to transact digitally um, with clear messaging key signposting and of course um, finally Brett I think um, internal buy-in as well from colleagues is key so um, one thing we found um, with regards to uh, our contact center, one of their key KPIs was um, um, making sure that they uh, resolve uh, customer queries in a given time and um, make sure that they, um, their call duration is as short as it possibly can be, um, as well as uh, obviously resolving the customer issue. And that um, was, uh, was opposing to the actual challenge of trying to get the uh, contact centre staff to signpost customers online. So it's just making sure that all of your channels are fully aligned, all your colleagues are fully aligned in terms of what it means to be digital, because ultimately for contact centre staff, it means making their lives easier going forwards. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's a great point about internal buy-in machine. I think, you know, for, for us, we've been involved in a lot of projects where the key, key drivers behind the business have been focused on it, but if it hasn't been waterfalled down throughout the organization, you know, it's, 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 it's dead in the water before it kind of starts. So that's a, it's a really, really valuable point. Um, Dan, anything you want to add to that of, of sort of our, some of our experiences in similar areas? Yeah, I think, you know, Nasheen touched on it, but I think internal buy-in is one of the key parts. You know, there needs to be a want and a desire internally for it to succeed. And I think, you know, some of the stuff that we've worked on with, with clients is actually, how do we just show that vision to the entire team internally? You know, actually show how improved customer experience can actually, you know, make a better, a better place to be. It's not about, you know, I think some people feel that there's an element where actually is digital going to take away my, my role and actually we're going to be replaced. And I think it's all about actually, you know, it's how do we just make this better for, for the end user? It's not about replacing someone, you know, someone may be 
great in a call center and, and they're no longer be going to be on the phones, but they maybe shift to a different channel where actually they support the customer in a different way. Um, so I think part of that is just, you know, getting everyone to buy in and it, it's sharing that vision um, and, and having a vision at the end of it. It's not about really short term projects that, that make something more efficient. It's about driving efficiencies to have this end goal, which is, which is all about customer experience. And I think the other thing is that I think sometimes people feel that digital is the solution in its own right, um, but it's not. It's just saying how digital is a, a, a solution and an enabling tool to allow you to do this. It's not about just having a digital team that does all the digital stuff over there. It's actually, it sits at the heart of, of the business um, and everyone's on board with that. Um, so I think, I think that's the key part. Um, and then from a, an external point of view, I think the other thing is, you know, things just like, you know, as she mentioned, uh, signposting, messaging, but, you know, really basic kind of nuts and bolts around things like imagery. You know, we were working with Yorkshire Water and every time they talked about contact, there was a picture of a lady with a headset on. But the idea there was they didn't want people to call. So, you know, how do you make sure you, you tell people the right things? You know, if you don't want people to call the call centre, don't show a picture of someone sat in a call centre. Um, so there's lots that, that can kind of just evolve through that process and just make sure, you know, the basics are covered off, but really it's there from a strategic point of view. Awesome. Um, and I suppose next area that, that we wanted to sort of discuss as well is how can we kind of free up resources to focus time where it's needed most? Um, and again, maybe Dan, if, if, if we come to you first on this, but um, what what areas can people get at it, it sort of first port of call and have a, have a big impact in? Yeah, I think obviously there's, there's the stuff Annie mentioned around experience and just generally, you know, kind of some of that look and feel and how you can shape some of that, I think. But the other thing is, again as she mentioned like look mapping that journey and understanding you know where are the key obstacles where are the things that we need to improve and you know often it, it can be that decision around you know things might be high volume and that looks like a priority and you know we had one example where someone wanted to move what was a short conversation on the phone because we want to reduce call volumes so let's make that a really long conversation on live chat which doesn't drive any efficiencies it appears to be putting digital at the heart of what you do but but it's not it's just um, creating more workload internally. So again, some of this is just understanding what are the, the key the key stages and mapping that out to understand that actually it's not about having a digital solution at the end. It's about improving stuff at the beginning from a workflow, a process point of view, how that whole system works and, and working that through with technological improvements. Um, and you know, that might be things like notifications. How do you notify people of things that are coming up rather than expecting them to call you to find out information where it's things like scheduling, you know, often scheduling has lots of different systems. It's how do you make that more efficient and transform that? Um, but, you know, it's not just about moving from one thing to another. It's about prove, improving that whole process. Um, but I definitely think there's the short term things you can improve that are a bit more kind of um, aesthetic, but also make sure you're looking at the back end and improving processes and workflows that drives that transformational change. Yeah, I think um, we had an example, didn't we, again, probably with Yorkshire Water, where if they had a leak in a, in a street, they might get 15 phone calls about that leak. And those were 15 individual um, negative contacts that, that counted against them from a regulator perspective. And actually, just creating an app that, that then we put a push notification out to everybody within um, sort of 100 meters of the leak to let them know we knew about the leak, we were working on it, and there was an engineer on the way instantly kind of resolved something like 10 percent of their negative contacts per annum which was was costing them a lot of money in terms of the way their industry is regulated and fines on, on negative contacts so very simple technology and in, 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 in massively supported their business objectives moving forward um nusheen something andy touched on earlier around channel choice is, is something i know you, you're very passionate about and you guys at home group have, have worked solidly on is there anything you can kind of add around that yeah, I think it's important to point out that um, today's customer is ever more complex with the amount of um, choice we've now got and um, the mobile technology that is available to us where at a click of a button we can order cinema tickets, for example. Um, so consequently, um, customers have higher expect expectations and higher demands of us as housing associations. So um, I think it's important to acknowledge, um, based on my previous point and what um, Andy also mentioned and, and Dan's touched upon as well, is that some inquiries are definitely better served online and others do require 
human contact. So, uh, for example, you know, if you've got a vulnerable customer who has a specific, um, who is experiencing financial difficulty, for example, uh, a, a, a phone call is better served in that instance. So humanizing the actual um, uh, communication. However, having said that, um, utilizing um, a specific content online and personalizing that experience also has an, as an adds a uh, human element to your online platform. So it's being mindful of that uh, and just making sure that we give customers that choice and um, maximize the access to choice of channels. Yeah, absolutely. I think if there's a, you know, if there's a hole in your roof and there's water pouring through, it's not a time to do 12 clicks on an app. It's definitely a time to just hit a call button and speak to someone for sure. So I think, yeah, couldn't couldn't agree more on that. Um, I think we've had a we've had a question come in here from 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 Brian Beverly around uh, where do you suggest a small organisation with 500 customers uh, where levels of internet access and, and use of mobile technology are, are, are low starts. I suppose, Andy, kind of getting back to, to your point earlier and, and, and probably Dan as well, it's it's thinking about prioritizing those high volume journeys. Uh, and probably, I know a lot of the projects we undertake is thinking about what are some of the easiest journeys that you can digitize um, in the first instance and, and, and trying to sort of prioritize those if it is something as easy as, you know, just kind of um, reporting a, a non-urgent problem or something like that that can be taken away from call centers and reduced the strain. Any advice there, guys, on that, Andy? Dan? Andy, you're still muted. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, just talking away at me, so I've got a big alert as well. I still didn't talk on. Um, yeah, I think, you know, being honest, I, 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 that is a, a very, very, very tricky situation because, you know, normally if we see we've got low levels of internet access, well, actually, how can we start using more modern technology? Sim I'm not going to bore you with technical, but more, but more um, modern technologies that will allow offline browsing and allow you to kind of, when you do pick up an internet connection, we can then download and store kind of data and content on a device. So if you do have a patchy internet connection, you can still access content, you can use devices to store it, and then you can almost call and send data into the into a business as and when. Would have been my, off, my kind of first response to you know, low internet usage is quite difficult. But then you've now doubled that one up, and but we've also got a low, low mobile um, device uptake, which is, is quite a, a, a tricky one, really, because we're trying to get the two technologies across both. I think we still can, we still can build offline capabilities uh, using um, apps, uh, apps for televisions, apps for 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 laptops, which would still aid. You know, we talk about Alexa skills as a potential opportunity, but technology is becoming more and more accessible, and it's becoming um, from a cost perspective, I think, as well as um, different devices for different people. So I think. My advice would be to, you know, there is offline capabilities and we can work around it with, with certain devices. And I think it would then be about, as Brett said, looking at what journeys realistically would go online because, it, you know, it, it, there's no point investing in that, that, that time if it's not going to be uh, adopted by our customers. So I think it's a, a, a bit of a long-winded exercise to, to identify which ones could and how, but it wouldn't be possible. And it's probably, like I say, it's probably unique to everyone, like you've mentioned, Andy. And I think, as Nasheen said, just signposting that end to end, you'll probably find the certain journeys that might be more achievable to digitize than, than others. Um, I think th 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 there's another question coming there from Ashley Wallace, um, which uh, really interesting insight. Thanks. Uh, big data you mentioned on digital behaviors outside of housing. Can you give any specific examples for how this has been used within the housing sector to improve customer experience and journeys? as it's a bit harder without the retail trackable, forecastable buyer habits. Um, I think Andy, you and I chatted about this earlier, didn't we, in terms of using big data to identify potential negative sort of threats or, or opportunities further down the line in terms of the kind of canceling the, the, the gas engineer. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, I don't know if I want to steal the machines than they here, but we talked the other day about uh, early in early intervention and looking at kind of trigger points across the lifetime of a customer through behaviours. Machine, shall I let you shoot and then I'll go on top of it? That probably comes to our next question, doesn't it? Yeah, machine, do you want to pick that one up? Oh, no problem. So, um, yes, uh, I spoke to Andy about this earlier also. So it's important that we use um, our cus online customer behavior um, as, uh, in order to kind of um, 
provide those kind of trigger points, if you like. So for example, if somebody is um, hovering over the website around the um, I'm struggling to make a payment or a financial difficulty section, then um, that is a key um, nugget, golden nugget of information, I would say, to um, uh, provide a proactive content or prompt to proactive content, uh, contact, sorry, um, to help support that customer immediately. And I think it, it's um, data usage like that, which is fundamental uh, without being big brotherish to help support those customers who are facing perhaps financial difficulty or are, are stuck on a page um, for minutes looking for a specific content and this is where I think functionality like live chat can come in where you can actually see uh, what content um, customers are viewing and rather than reactive live chat proactive live chat is also an option which uh, which organizations often forget about so um, utilizing data to um, inform what kind of next action um, an organization should take is, is very very helpful and insightful yeah and, and some, sorry Andy yeah I was just gonna say yeah, yeah. I, you know, for me, this is probably the most exciting part um, of it. We talk about digital platforms being able to, a digital platform and a decent website will allow us to utilize this data in the best possible way. So we look at vulnerable customers, we look for, for triggers of, you know, that being on there once, they've been on there twice, and then the support and content and the experience around that can, allows you to be more than just a, a uh, housing association brand then you can really kind of support that customer and start talking about financial advice but as machine said then then we can at that point is when we really want someone to open up and talk to us you know and, and at that point it's about the human element it's about using um, techniques persuasive techniques to, to to encourage somebody to pick up the phone um, and and reassure that person and we talk when we when we start the project with home group was very much about every single customer we've kind of got a, a, a plan of how we want that customer to evolve and how we want their journey within our our world to, to evolve first of all it's about making people feel reassured that they can afford it we will help them manage payments and actually we want to start talking you know really at the top end of about shared ownership and taking them on that journey through life and that for me is the most exciting part because then digital can enable us to do that in a, a way more sophisticated. We have spoke before about them calculators and, and, and ways to create engagement, help upskill, help educate people uh, or, or tenants is, I think, fundamental for, for you guys when you talk about customer promise machine and, and what we're trying to do, which we know is important. Dan, anything uh, anything you want to add to, to Andy there? I suppose probably more from a, a kind of on the ground perspective, you know, some of that data, you know, outside of housing, you kind of often have an end goal as things like you, you know, if you're selling a product, how many sales have we had? But, you know, actually just thinking about that from an analytical point of view, remember that there's lots of micro things you want to be tracking. So make sure you, you've got everything set up correctly and actually that can inform you. You know, if you're not tracking the data now, it's hard to retrospectively go back. You know, any any piece of information on the site that will be important that would give you a data point that would be important in the future. Make sure you're tracking it. You know, not necessarily in housing, but you know, with one client we had, where you know the focus there was on electricity, and if there was an outage, you know, what we were looking at is actually how many people are using the postcode lookup tool. <clears throat> Excuse me, and then we passed that back into their their center actually, and they got a lot more real time information about what people were searching for before they actually knew about it. So it's, it's how do you make sure you're tracking everything that's important so that it can it can give you that insight in the future. Cool. Awesome. Um, I, I think in two, I'm conscious of time, Kate, and um, I suppose in uh, some of the key sort of takeaways that, I, that I've kind of pulled out of that, um, you know, is, is, is you probably probably asking yourself, are you ready for the, the new kind of digital norm? And is your organization ready for that? I think you know, digital technologies made its way into our living rooms and our homes in a new way. Like Andy mentioned in his talk around Zooms and we're all very comfortable with this now. Those new expectations and behaviors aren't going away. We're not going to go back to these traditional ways of communicating and these are going to be here to stay. I think um, maintaining a customer centricity and a customer focus, you know, is, is key in, in, in not just a sole pursuit of digital efficiencies. Don't forget that it needs to be humanized. There needs to be contact. There needs to be engagement. Um, I think like Nasheen mentioned, self-serve and, and channel choice is, is going to be critical to, to providing that kind of optimized customer journey in the future and creating the best experience. 
Um, I think things like Alexa skills are, are, are really exciting. Like Andy mentioned, it'd be great to go into and have another topic or a follow-up just chatting around how we can utilize things like this more actionably. Um, personalization, big data, all of these things, I think, in this nudge theory behind, again, as Nasheen and the guys mentioned, how we can identify vulnerable people and potential threats and opportunities inside our tenant base to engage more effectively as early as possible, I think is, is going to be critical. Um, and yeah, this isn't a one-time thing. This is, this is going to be iterating. This is, this is the new norm. This is digital needs to be at the center of everything you do. And as Dan said, this isn't an isolated team in the corner. This, this consideration has to be applied to everything and it has to constantly evolve and, and be an iterative process um, is, is probably what I've taken from today. Um, so yeah, I think that was us. That, 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 was, that was MediaWorks. And, and again, thanks, Nasheen. And I suppose, Kate, back, back over to you. Thank you. Yeah, I agree. I've, I've, I've really enjoyed that and I've learned a lot. And I think my big takeaway is probably the digital being a sort of organisational mindset and how you get that, that buy-in from people um, across the business. Um, thanks to everyone who's joined us today. We're keen to put on more of this type of, of event um, for the membership. So if there's anything that you'd like us to cover in future, please do get in touch either with me or with one of the MediaWorks team, we'd be more than happy to, to pull something else together that sort of explores different avenues to this. As Brett said, it, it's certainly not going away, but there is a real opportunity to, to do something different. Um, so please do, do get in touch and we'll obviously keep you posted of anything new that we do as well. But other than that, just thank you again and I hope you have a, a good bank holiday weekend. Awesome. Thank you. Cheers, guys. Thanks. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.